Nashville Predators add another piece to an already crowded Ford room, adding Samuel Fagamo off waivers from the LA Kings. We'll look at what he brings to the roster. Plus, Alexander Carrier or Dante Fabro. It seems like an either or situation for the last defensive spot on the roster. We'll talk about that battle today on the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Predators podcast your first listen of the day. Every single day, we are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast available to you wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, I want to start that with a special hello to our loyal Locked On Pred heads out there, the everydayers who tune into every single show. We love you guys. We appreciate the support you give us week after week. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer at Penalty Box Radio, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at the Hockey News. Also want to mention today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Uh, some interesting topics to tackle today, and uh, we have Alexander Carrier and Dante Fapro, two guys uh, who just a few months ago seemed like they were sort of building blocks for the Nashville Predators moving forward. Now it seems like they're battling for one spot uh, on the blue line. That's something that I think a lot of people are going, huh, this is this is kind of an interesting development to watch here. Uh, so we're going to give our thoughts on that in a second. But first, uh, some roster news. Anna? Yeah, yeah. This this one kind of surprised me. I'm not gonna lie, but the Nashville Predators uh, they picked up Samuel Fagimo off of waivers. He was with the LA Kings, um, and he's played 13 NHL games with the LA Kings. He played, I think, nine last season. And just a little bit of trivia: one of them was against the Nashville Predators. Oh, um, I did not know that. He did in Jan- January 21st, and I know that because it was my son's birthday. So these are the okay. things that I remember and how I remember them, friends. But yeah, played against the Nashville Predators, played like eight and a half minutes. So it's not like we had a lot of time to get to know him and yeah. exchange information. But yeah, so claimed off waivers. Um, interesting move, like um, because I feel like there are so many young players that we've talked about coming into training camp vying for an opportunity and they brought in these veterans it kind of was a little bit surprising to me i'm like you're picking a guy up off waivers we we've, we've got guys out the wazoo here but he's an interesting one i really am i'm intrigued by this like let's just yeah. see what we have here with this fella yeah I, I to be honest didn't know a lot about this guy mm-hmm. uh the when i saw him on the transaction page yesterday was the first time i've ever heard his name right um looked him up 50 goals in the ahl over the past two years including 27 uh you know a couple of years ago so that i think is you know a big thing i think there's a lot of people sort of hoping he becomes a high-end scorer mm-hmm. uh, in the nhl uh i asked eric Denay about him uh, and his words when he found that out were, and I quote, oh, dope. <laughs> so that's that seems that's huge, like, y'all. Yeah. So that seems like a good endorsement. Uh, Eric did provide more insights that he's got a really good shot, uh, you know, pretty good offensive hands mm-hmm. and, you know, speed. Uh, he thinks he's one of those guys that can be. Um, you know, maybe a good, you know, long-term project in the right environment. Um, and I will add, Anne, that, you know, remember when the Preds lost Ellie Tolvin in last year and there's uh-huh. like a lot of people, you know, a lot of Preds friends on Twitter saying like, this is a mistake. Like, you know, mm-hmm. this is, this is one we're really going to regret. Really wish, you know, we would have kept him over maybe somebody else on the roster. You go through some of the tweets uh, from LA Kings fans, and it's kind of the same vibe. Yeah, you know, a lot of it was, you know, I, I feel like we gave up on him too early. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot of untapped potential. He needed more playing time. So that seems like the vibe. Even you know the LA Kings. Uh, I can't remember if it was uh, Coach Todd McClellan or, or Rob Blake who said, 
yesterday that was like we really wanted to keep him um you know we were kind of hoping he went through waivers but he's definitely somebody who deserves an nhl shot so i mean the the everything adds up to this guy kind of being an interesting mm-hmm. like low risk high reward kind of just trial pickup yeah i 100 percent agree with you with the ellie tolvin and vibe on this um, he was uh, drafted in the second round. He was 50th overall. But going back to Eric Dene, who is so smart about prospects. I mean, this this is the guy that that we go to. He had him 35th on you know his draft board. He was drafted in 2019. L.A. Kings got him in the second round. So this is somebody who's got, you know, kind of a a high regard when he was going into the draft. Like you said, you know, only 13, I think 13 NHL games experience. But his AHL time was huge. And he reminds me a lot of the things that the Predators lost with Ellie Tolvanen. Because with Ellie Tolvanen, you're like, you have a pure goal scorer. And you just let a pure goal scorer go. This is very much what his game is. If you go, he played for the Ontario Reign. If you have a few minutes today, go to YouTube. Ontario Reign has a highlight reel video of him. And of course, nobody's life is a highlight reel. That's a whole sociological statement that we're, we don't have time to dive into on a hockey podcast. But That's on tomorrow's episode. Tomorrow's episode, we're going to dive into why Instagram is not real life. But... You want to watch this young man's highlight reel because he is a goal scorer, y'all. He loves a one-timer from the circle. He, I look at him and I'm like, oh, he's in Alex Ovechkin's office. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's where he's very good on the power play, um, great hands, good goal scorer. So I think the Nashville Predators, you know, it, look, you're never going to make up for what you did to Ellie Tolvin and when it comes to this fan base. But I think this is a really interesting project. That's the word. I think you you nailed it. He is an interesting project. This is somebody that's going to be really fun to watch and see. You know, again, right environment. We saw it with Ellie Tolvanen, right environment, right opportunity. Yeah. Could the Nashville Predators be that? I don't know, maybe. Yeah, and it's interesting. I hear the words power play uh, a lot when I hear about, you know, maybe the, the signing connected to the Nashville Predators. Uh, I hear like help on offense, like help right. finishing, uh, which is certainly something the Nashville Predators need. The only thing that's interesting to me, and is just what this means for the rest of the roster because right. you know we're looking at the forward core and we're already you know kind of trying to figure out who is going to get sent down like who the preds are going to cut because there's you know all familiar names at there at this point um you know with the exception of nolan burke who's up here because he's recovering injured, from surgery yeah. and um you know he will probably be placed on injured reserve when you know the final roster cuts go down um but you know what does this mean you know, we, we're already having, you know, you know, a crowded top nine with right. you know, guys like Tomasino and Dennis Gurianov, um, Kiefer Sherwood, you know, kind of battling for, you know, maybe that last consistent scoring role. So I'm yeah. curious, you know, what the thought process here is. Is there and he plays on the right side, which is where, you know, a lot of like a lot of the you know, people like Tomasino and Evangelista and Gurionov all play. Right. So that, you know, it kind of begs the question. It's like, okay, is there, is the thought process that there's somebody on that right side that Andrew Burnett looks at and said, I don't know, like, yeah. you know, I, I think there might be somebody, a better option out there. Um, or is this more of a, Andrew Burnett and Barry Trotz going, okay, we want to be more skilled Mm -hmm. even on our fourth line. Yes. So is there, you know, is, is uh, Fagamo somebody that can step in and maybe be like, you know, a fourth line, go out there and be like an offensive, you know, a power play specialist, but also add some more pop to that fourth line. So we have more of a scoring dynamic instead of like a checking line dynamic. It's going to be really interesting to watch him uh, in his few Mm -hmm. practices and and in these final two preseason games, just to see kind of what the Preds thought process here is. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm really excited to kind of get eyes on him. It's a great opportunity for him. 
um, to sort of showcase what he has. And again, you look at how Andrew Brunette is kind of changing the, the way this Nashville Predators team executes on offense. This is one of those players that may fit in nicely here. So I really, at first I was like, what are we doing? We got, we have forwards aplenty, right. but I really like this. And, and I love the word project. Let's see, let's see what we have with him. This could be really exciting. So I like this pickup. Yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting uh, to see yeah. how this plays out. That's for sure. Who knows? Preds maybe uh, find uh, a little bit of a diamond in the rough, maybe a, a yeah. good depth score uh, yep. to in the roster. Uh, another roster battle that seems Ooh. to be shaping up, that's the way it looks anyway, yeah. is Alexander Carey and Dante Fabro. These were two guys that looked like they were franchise players mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago. Now it seems like they're just battling for a roster spot. We'll talk about what that means uh, to the team. And if there's a creative way, maybe both find their way into the lineup. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but first, want to mention today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Uh, buying tickets to your favorite things, concerts, sporting events, the theater, comedy shows. It shouldn't be stressful, but let's face it. It is sometimes. You have no idea what your seats look like. Uh, you have no idea how much it's going to cost with all those weird added fees on there. You don't know if the seats you're buying, you can get cheaper somewhere else. That's where Game Time comes in handy. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And all-in prices show up on your total up front, so you know exactly what you're getting. You know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees. And the best part about it is that you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps on your phone. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, Anna, uh, a big roster battle. Seemingly, we think everything points this way, is Alexander Carey versus Dante Fabro for that last spot on what appears to be the Predators' Uh, third pair, the right side of that third pair. Um, you know, it's that's the way it seems, mm -hmm. at, at least at this point, because Pred seemed gung ho uh, about Roman Yossi and Luke Shen. That's a whole different discussion. Uh, they seem pretty gung ho about Ryan McDonough and Tyson Berry entering the season. Uh, Jeremy Lazan seems like he's going to get playing time as the left-handed defenseman on that line, mm -hmm. which means that leaves us with Carrie and Fabro. Uh, not sort of the extra defenseman, you know, last man in battle that no. I think Reds fans were expecting when this training camp started. No, not at all. I feel like this kind of has come out of nowhere, but it does get, you know, it does feel like it's shaping up to be either or and not where do both fit in because both of them are in a situation where this is a, a year where I think Barry Trotz and Andrew Burnett want to see, we've seen some really great things from each of you. Will the real Dante Fabro, will the real Alexander Carrier stand up yeah. kind of the situation and it does feel a little bit like all of a the sudden these two guys who are going into training camp, I'm thinking, OK, who's going to slot in in which spot now becomes which one is going to slot in to which spot. And it's it's a little bit nerve wracking for me. Like I have some anxiety about this being the situation, but I understand it. Um, and I'm with you like the Luke Shen Roman Yossi thing. We could talk about it. Um, yeah. I do like I do like uh, McDonough and Barry together. I really like the you know those two together. I think that that's maybe something that I didn't expect. I thought you would have one. You know, I thought you would maybe not put them together, but you know, here we are, and I and I like how that looks. But 
you know, you look back at Dante Fabro's career, his best season was 2020, 2021. You know, he just had an incredible season, really popped off. And you're like, okay, this is what we thought we were going to get from Dante Fabro. Because remember, he was kind of chucked into the NHL. Yeah. You know, he didn't, we didn't get a lot of warm up in AHL. Let us see what you've got. Dante Fabro kind of got chucked in there and really did well to begin his career. Yeah. I mean, remember, he was the one that did so well that that's why David Poyle felt emboldened to trade PK Subban's contract was because he saw Dante Fabro play and thought, okay, we have a regular top four replacement. Yep. Uh, Dante Fabro never played in the, in the AHL. You know, I think he might have played like a, a playoff game. Maybe. maybe with yeah, maybe. But yeah, I mean, he just, he went, he went from the frying pan into the fire. Yeah. And that was a lot of responsibility on him early. And, you know, the first couple of years, I think we were just looking and saying like, um, okay, like this is just kind of a young defenseman struggling. And maybe, you know, we shouldn't expect a guy who's never played pro hockey before to be a 20 minute a night guy. Right. Um, and then, you know, it, it's interesting because in terms of Dante Fabro, he never quite became what I think the Predators wanted him to become, mm-hmm. which was, you know, that just top four, like two way threat, you know, the next, um, you know, the next Ryan Ellis, just, right. you know, a good, like a, just a, you know, a good puck moving defenseman, good for 30, 40 points a year. Never really became that. But I think he did develop into just, you know, kind of a solid anchor, like stay at home right. tank defenseman, um, prone to some mental lapses here and there, um, but still like a very reliable defenseman. Um, and, you know, now the fact that, you know, there's a lot of talk about him being the extra defenseman. I mean, that's that's jarring from where we we're at a few years ago especially because it seems like, you know, there's still kind of a role for him on this team. Right. Yeah. I didn't have this scenario on my bingo card from previous seasons, you know, where he was fighting. And I think that there was a lot of grace because like, you know, he didn't, he came into the NHL without a lot of AHL experience and um, he really did well. And I think there's a, you know, there was a ton of potential and we saw some really good things from Dante Fabro. But like you said, there were also some hitches in the giddy up and I think probably the, the predators wanted to see, fewer and fewer of those and maybe his trajectory hasn't been as smooth as he's gotten ice time over the last couple of seasons than what they wanted or what they anticipated so you know it's hard I mean you can't say the Predators aren't are down on Dante Fabro because they're not same thing can be said for Alexander Carrier. You can't say the Predators are down on Alexander Carrier. They're not. You know, Carrier had his best season in 21-22. And, um, you know, he had 30 points. He was a plus 26, y'all. Alexander Carrier was playing some defense and looking like he should be on Bridgerton while doing it. Like, very good right. defensive player. I think there's more offensive side to Carrier that we just haven't seen yet. But it's a prove it season all of a sudden for both of them. But yeah. they're fighting for time in which to prove it. Yeah. He, Carrier looked like a guy that would have been Roman Yossi's long term partner yes. just a couple of years ago. I mean, mm-hmm. he was a 30 point guy. Uh, and it seems like the Predators finally found that, you know, just sort of complementary defensive piece uh, behind Yossi and Ekholm. Like, of course, they had traded Ryan Ellis by then, but it seems like okay, we finally found something. Like, we finally found a big piece. Um, I think the one-year extension uh, kind of said it all, where Barry Trotz and Andrew Burnett came in, and it's like, we're not really sure what we think of you yet. Right. And it's funny because we sort of joked around a a little bit, Anne, about, like, you know, we've joked a lot about it. It seems like Carrie and Dante Fabro are, like, the two dudes that show up to the – Halloween party with the same costume on. And <laughs> it's just like, okay, like it feels like it'd be more impactful if only one of you had this on. Right. Um, and, and it kind of feels like that way now where it just feels like the predators are going to have to make a decision on one of them. It really does feel like one or the other at, at this point. And it's interesting to see which way they're going to go. 
Yeah. And it's, I hate the situation because I think that if one of them goes, this could be a regret situation a few seasons from now for the Predators if they let one of them go. But the flip side from the Predators is they've got some young defensemen, like there's some defensive depth. And if you are in a reset and you've got uh, some seasons of grace where you can help develop a young player, I can understand why the Nashville Predators may opt to do that. You know, so I think when in the trajectory of the Nashville Predators, the fact that they they still want to see something from each of these guys, the timing of it all maybe works a little bit against Carrier and Favreau because, you know, the Predators aren't, they're not saying we're a team who is going to make a deep postseason run and we've got to have an experienced NHL defenseman to do it. You know, they can afford to, say, hey, you know what we're going to do? Invest in, you know, two seasons in Mark Del Geizo, Spencer Stasny, you mm-hmm. know, Tanner Mullendyke. So I don't, I didn't see it coming like this, but it'll be very interesting as the season begins. What is Andrew Brunette going to do with Fabro and Carrier? You know, yeah. how, how, are, how is this going to pan out? I don't get it. I don't see the puzzles coming together yet. Yeah. And there's an interesting option uh, on the table that maybe – you know, maybe both could get regular playing time in some weird way. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Plus, Anne's takeaways from the preseason so far. Yeah, we're going to cover a little bit more about those boys and talk about what in the world have we learned about these Nashville Predators. But first, want to let you know this episode's brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. You can snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's right, $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. And look, this app is super easy to use. They have a wide range of betting options. You can do spreads, player props, over-unders, all kinds of action. They have a really good bet coming up this week that combines Derrick Henry and one other running back to see if they can both get combined 175 yards. Anyway, check it out. It's a kind of a cool bet. So go check it out at FanDuel.com slash locked on, and you can kick off your NFL season. Again, check out FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, and one more thing I kind of wanted to bring up about the Kerry Fabro situation mm-hmm. is that um, we talked about this a little bit, uh, kind of in passing with Alex Doherty yesterday. Um, could you envision a scenario where maybe there's either a both playing and one plays sort of on the unnatural left side or, you know, ha- like kind of a rotation with Jeremy Lazan or B, um, a situation where maybe, you know, you're designed to split minutes, like carry a couple games, Fabro, a couple minutes. I would love to see that because I think this is an evaluation year. You've really got to put them both out on the ice to figure out what are you going to do next season? So they're going to have to do something, whether it is one of them is going to swap to the other side, which I would like to see both of them on the ice. You know, I think that they both bring different aspects of the game or like you said, whether, you know, Hey, we're going to give Carrier three games. We're going to give Faber three games. I think they have to do something like that because this is bottom line an evaluation year. The Nashville predators have to know what they've got in these guys. And the only way to do that is to put them in games. So they're going to have to do something like that. Um, I don't know what I don't know which one I think is more likely. Yeah, I mean, there's also the possibility that you know, like, like, it, but it's weird. It's one of those things where it's like the the college team that's like splitting snaps with quarterbacks, and it's right. you know, it's the saying. It's like if you don't have one, if you have two quarterbacks, you have zero quarterbacks, really. Right. And it kind of feels like just if you're you know giving carry some reps and then giving Fabro some reps, it's just sort of a, you know, you're, you're not really giving either one a chance to kind of build momentum with this roster. 
Um, and then what do you do if one of them gets on a heater and right. are you going to be like, okay, hey, like time for Dante Fabro now, or, you know, are yeah. you going to be, you know, yeah. let, let carry a kind of adjust some lineup or, or vice versa. However, that goes up. I mean, it really feels like the only option at this point is that one of them, uh, wins that spot and one of them doesn't. Um, I mean, that, that kind of just feels like at this point. Yeah. And I also think you would want to see them in a top or in a you know top four defensive role. And I'm not sure that that's the way this is kind of being constructed either. So I think there's a lot of questions about what is going to happen with Carrier and Fabro. I would like to see both of them on the ice a lot because I think that's the information the Predators need to move ahead next season. Yeah. We'll see what they do. Big yeah. question. Didn't see this one coming, y'all. Yeah, it's... It's certainly uh, different than I think we expected the futures of either of these guys to turn out uh, yeah. from just a few years ago. Um, real quick, Anne, mm -hmm. uh, you were not here yesterday. You were enjoying some awesome family time. I was. Um, but, of course, we got to talk about the Preds' fourth preseason game uh, in which they lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning 5-4. to four. Um, What were your takeaways from – you know, maybe the last two preseason games against the Lightning. A couple of things really stood out to me that were encouraging. First of all, I think the Predators are moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the Florida doubleheaders were wolf. Like, the, those were wolf city. Those were rough games, which, you know, we knew that they were going to be rough. They were rough games. But I think the Predators, you're seeing them get better. You're seeing them get more comfortable. You're seeing players become more comfortable in their roles. And I think that this past game against uh, the Lightning, the 5-4 game, you saw players in the most comfortable they've been with this system, with this style of play, and with each other. So I think things are moving in the right direction. One of the things that I loved is that it didn't look like the Predators were profoundly outskated. Out. Yeah. The speed was not different. And that's something, you know, talk about family time. God love her. My mom was here. And my mom is just learning hockey. And But one of her things is it seems like the Nashville Predators are slower than other teams after she had watched them play the Tampa Bay Lightning. Are they slower? They seem slower. <laughs> like, Yes, mother, you should be on a podcast about that. Um, so, but I, it really didn't feel like there was this huge disparity in game speed. So exciting to see. And and look, you know, Tampa Bay played a lot of their best guys. I mean, obviously Vasilevsky's not in net, but, um, you know, they had Braden Point out there and they had Steven Stamkos. And, you know, so they had a lot of their top guys. And I felt like the Predators looked like they were hanging in there. They weren't being skated around. So I thought that was really encouraging to see. Like they're learning to translate practice fast into game fast. And I think that's going to be a process for the team. Um, the other thing that was really interesting to me is I feel like we're seeing, you know, it was good to see Phil Tomasino get a goal. Tommy Novak. Yeah. Tommy Novak, you are who you said you were. You are you know, we're seeing the Tommy Novak that that we saw at the end of last season, I think this preseason. So that's good. Would love to see some of the veteran guys able to finish. Philip Forsberg had some great opportunities, you know, and Tompkins was he was like a man possessed in net. So I get that. But like what we saw from the young guys, ready to see these top lines with these veterans kind of come together and produce a little bit more. But overall, you you know, I, I walked away from that game feeling like we're getting there. Like we're getting somewhere, Nashville Predators fans. We're getting somewhere. Yeah, 47 shots on goal against the Lightning. And as we pointed out yesterday, it's not the Syracuse Crunch or whatever their <laughs> AHL team is at this point. It, it was it yeah. was Steven Stamkos. It was Nikita Kucherov. Yes. It was Victor Hedman, uh, Braden Point. So the regular Tampa Bay Lightning guys – uh, and the Predators, you know, especially the younger players, especially that Novak uh, Evangelista Tomasino line, I think outplayed uh, a lot of their Tampa Bay counterparts. So that certainly is encouraging to see. Um, just got to clean up a few things, but I think right. certainly that's something that you hope to see during the regular season. Uh, two more preseason games yep. this week, uh, and then, and that's that's it. 
Like we got regular season hockey after that. So I mean, a week from today is it a week from today? It's a week from today. A week from today, y'all. Predators versus Tampa Bay Lightning in the afternoon. We are Mark Del Geizo days away from official puck drop where the stuff really counts. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow on Locked on Predators, we will uh, get an update on a predator who's not a predator anymore. Matt Duchesne got a crossover plan with uh, Joey Erickson from Locked on Stars. Uh, what what else would we have talked about? Hannah? I just can't even. Okay. But. I just can't even. So that's coming up um, to the, tomorrow on the Lockdown Predators. And then later this week, we'll say uh, what we want to see from the final preseason games. And where can people find your work? You can find my work online at insidethepreds.com. You can find me on Twitter X at and K underscore Mama on Ice. You can find me at penlyboxradio.com on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. You can find the show on Facebook and Instagram. Just search Lockdown Predators or on Twitter at LO underscore Predators. That's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Predators podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back with all new episodes tomorrow. We'll see you then.